Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode four of the MFFL Nation podcast. I'm your host, Mason Schwaber, and let's get it started, guys. So just to, just to start this podcast off with the newest signing of the Dallas Mavericks, and it was officially made last night, JaVale McGee, three years, a little over $20 million. Uh, I believe a big signing for the Dallas Mavericks, you know, one of the biggest needs coming into this offseason was getting rim protectors and lob threats for our main guy Luka Doncic so now with Nico Harrison and Jason Kidd verifying that Christian Wood, JaVal McGee, and Spencer Din- Dinwiddie will be in the starting lineup I think that's a big upgrade that's a tall lineup our shortest guy will be 6'5", 6'6", in the starting lineup and I think having JaVal and Christian Wood in there is going to be a big big great thing for the Mavericks um so I'm excited about that JaVal isn't one of the best centers in the NBA but he can get boards he can block shots and he's a finisher around the rim he's a great lob threat and I think that's what the Mavs front office was looking for when we look at free agency I wouldn't say the Mavs did a crazy great job one of the most upsetting things is that a lot of Mavs fans we're looking forward to signing Goran Dragic and failed to do that. He recently signed with the Chicago Bulls and that was sort of shocking. You know, Luka Doncic and Goran Dragic have a great relationship. So for us to not get Dragic was sort of shock for most Mavs fans. So a little crazy there, but you know, we got the trade done with with uh, Christian Wood sending away four guys that didn't play whatsoever. We traded away the 26th pick. And in return, in the NBA draft, we traded a 2024 and a 2028 pick. Second round for the 37th pick in the NBA draft and probably just drafted the most underrated player in the NBA draft, Jaden Hardy who recently just had a stellar performance in the summer league, which we're going to get to in a minute. But just to continue on free agency, you know, the only signing we have currently is JaVale McGee in free agency. We re-signed Theo Pinson, but the only new player that we've brought on during free agency is McGee. So if, you know, on Twitter, I've been bringing this up, grading the maps off season, I'd give it a B, B plus at the high, B plus. I'll go with B plus, you know, to get wood, and to trade away four guys that didn't play whatsoever important minutes in the playoffs to get Christian Wood and McGee, two guys that are 6'9 and 7 foot. I, I'm stoked on that. I do think Dallas Mavericks need another ball handler with Luka Doncic just in case things go south with Hardy, but I'm excited, man, for this upcoming season. Looking at it, you're going to have Luka, probably Hardy, and Nilakina at the one. And then at the two, you got you got guys like Dinwiddie, you got Reggie, you got Pinson, Josh Green. And then the three, I'm going to go with the uh, starter, Dorian Finney-Smith, which is probably going to be expected. I think Dodo is definitely going to start over Tim Hardaway. So you got Doe, Tim, uh, who else? You know, possibly Tyler Dorsey or uh, AJ Lawson, which we'll get to. And then at the four, you got Wood, Maxi, and Bertons. And then at the five, you got McGee and Powell. So that's a that's a solid roster. Do I think that it's an automatic championship team? No. The Mavs are gonna have to have to definitely earn this championship this upcoming season if they want to compete. And they're gonna have to com- try really hard to get back to the Western Conference Finals. The West is stacked. I think a sleeper team is the Timberwolves. Now with that Rudy Gobert trade, so it's going to be really interesting to see how this all works out for Dallas, but I think they're moving in the right direction, and I think Nico Harrison is doing Nico Harrison things and has been a great addition to this team for the last year, so I'm excited to see where this goes, but let's move to the draft. You know, it happened a few weeks ago already. Big deal to get Jaden Hardy. He was the number two prospect coming out of high school, and if you're a math fan, you should be happy about this. You know, the guy can just go. He's a scorer. He's a little bit of a liability when it comes to passing the ball. He had a few turnovers in the recent summer league game against the Chicago Bulls, 
uh, but you know, just a great three level score. He can get to the basket whenever he wants to. He can shoot a three. He has a great mid range package. Defensive wise, I, I see pros and cons. I don't think he's fully consistent in that range yet, but there's definitely signs of being great on defense. So I'm super excited about this trade we completed in the draft to get Hardy. I think he's going to become a very important player for the Mavs in the coming years. And I think he's going to have a significant role this upcoming season. You know, the one thing that fans never understand, injuries happen. Tim Hardaway was hurt. That was a that was a deal breaker. And that allowed other guys to shine. That gave guys like Neil Aquino and Josh Green a chance to show what they're capable of. So God forbid, knock on wood, any injuries happen, Hardy's going to be there. I still think he's going to get decent playing time. And if he gets decent playing time, you're looking at a potential rookie of the year. So I'm really happy about that. Let's fast forward to the Mavs rough loss to the Chicago Bulls in the summer league game a few days ago. I thought it was a great game to watch. I thought it allowed Mavs fans to see what Hardy's capable of. I thought Mavs fans are really, really liking AJ Lawson over Moses Wright, which is something I'll continue to talk about. But Moses Wright is on a two-way deal right now. And as you can see, it's only been one game so far, but Wright did not have his best game. And Lawson is coming for that spot. You know, the Mavericks recently also signed Tyler Dorsey to a two-way. So that second two-way is is under competition right now. There's guys like Marcus Bingham Jr. out of Michigan State. You got A.J. Lawson, who has G League experience. You got Jalen LeCue with G League experience. You got a guard from Clemson. You got a bunch of talent. And... So it's going to be interesting to see how it goes. You know, we uh we have a game coming up tomorrow against the Utah Jazz at 10 p.m. Eastern on NBA TV. It's going to be another interesting game. I think Mavs fans are really liking this this uh, summer league, and it's allowing them to see what Hardy's capable of and many other players. So if we're being realistic here, I don't think Moses Wright gets that... Uh, two-way contract I think he's going to go down to the G League and I think someone's going to get bumped up but you know only only time can tell and something that is important to see is what players in this summer league would benefit from would benefit with Luka Doncic Hardy Hardy is a great catch and shoot three-point player obviously he's probably going to be on the he's going to be on the roster for the Mavericks He's a great catch and shoot player. I think he's going to become a big factor for the Dallas Mavericks when it comes to spotting up and getting a catch and shoot three pointer. And that's what Luca loves to have on his team. I think if AJ Lawson can keep playing off these screens, you know, it's only been one game, so I don't want to hype him up too much, but he shot six for 11. That's pretty outstanding. So, excuse me. So, if he can continue to do that, I think Moses Wright's in trouble, and I think that there's going to be a new Maverick on the roster, the official roster for the season. I think the seven-footer out of Michigan State, Marcus Bingham, has a good shot at making the roster too, but, you know, all these things are just going to have to, we're going to have to wait for patiently. Something that I think Mavs fans are really excited about that is just, it's not going to happen, is Colin Sexton, great player. The trade rumors, you know, we've heard Kyrie Irving trade rumors. We've heard Kevin Durant. We've heard Sexton. We've heard Ananobi. We've heard Jalen Brunson sign in trade rumors. Um, I'm hearing that's probably not going to happen. But, you know, just to jump on the Sexton train real quick, I don't think he's going to be a Maverick anytime soon. Do I think he would have been a great addition? I think that would have been great for him and Luka to be in that starting lineup together. Sexton's one hell of a player. He's coming off injury. He's looking good in all the social media videos I've seen lately. So sucks not to get Sexton. You know, the issue with the Mavericks in trading lately is that the guys that they're wanting to get rid of are very expensive. I'm not saying wanting to get of, rid of, but most likely to get rid of. You know, I'm sure Tim Hardaway was on the market. I'm sure Dwight Powell was. I'm sure Bertons was, but Powell's getting $12 million. Bertans is getting 16, and Tim Hardaway is getting 21. And no one wants Tim Hardaway right now except Dallas because they don't know how he's going to play after this 
crazy injury he had. No one wants Bertans because he's a spot up forward shooter averaging less than six points a game getting paid $16 million. No one wants Powell because, or I wouldn't say, let me rephrase this. People want these players just for not that price. You know, these are expensive guys. So when you look at Powell, he struggled in the postseason. You know, he didn't get a lot of playing time because they they trust in Maxi Cleaver more, I'd say, is a, is a well-known fact. And so it's a risk that teams are going to have to be willing to take to get these guys. Do I think Nico Harrison is done this offseason? No. I think he gets one more free agent. I don't think we could do another trade. But, you know, there's a saying, only time will tell, and we have to see what's going on. You know, I'm sure they're they're not in desperate need of a trade, but I'm sure they're searching for something. What sucks is I'm hearing rumors that we're probably not going to be able to get a sign-in trade with Jalen Brunson, that New York is probably just going to use their cap space to sign him. So I just get him and not have to give any way in return, you know. They recently just got rid of Taj Gibson to free up some space as well. So, I mean, you know, it sucks to see JB go. Um, he's done a lot for the city of Dallas the past few years. I think you could argue that the Mavericks wouldn't have moved on from the first round of the playoffs without JB. You know, he had a career high. I think he had 41 points against the Jazz. You know, him and Dinwiddie were just unbelievable. So it sucks to see JB go. Um, you know, I thought it was sort of obvious when his father got hired, Rick Brunson, to the Knicks, and, you know, it sucks. He he was a second-round pick, and the Mavs made him into their second most trustworthy player, which is something that I believe Hardy is going to be able to do in years to come. So, you know, as an MFFL, we don't wish bad on any player, and we wish Jalen Brunson the best in New York. Fun fact, I don't know if anyone ever thought of this, but New York's three best players now were all lefties. You got Barrett. You got Randall and JB. So that was funny to see, just a little fun fact. But yeah, uh, I think I think the Knicks got a good pickup with JB. I think they're definitely going to be a solid playoff team next year if they can develop him into their system properly. So it'll be cool to see. Uh, just a little update on some of the Mavs. You know, Luca is out in Europe. He's been playing for his team Slovenia in the World Cup qualifiers. He recently had a 30-point game. He's killing it. You know, it doesn't matter what country he plays in, he's going to dominate. He's going to give any team 30, 10, and 10 if he wants to. So, you know, props to Luca for that. I recently saw him in France at a few things with Zion Williamson. Made a few jokes with him here and there. So, you know, good for Luca. He's having a good off season. He looks like he's eating healthy again in shape, which I know was a worry for some Maverick fans coming in to 2022-23 season because last year he started off a little overweight for an NBA player. So it's good to see Luca already making strides to become a better player. And I believe next year will be year five for Luca, if I'm not wrong. So, you know, good for him. Uh, Mavs have been having – Nico was at the game, summer league game. Uh, Jay Kidd was, Reggie, Doe, Wood, Pinson, Green – so, I mean, the MAPS support system, and I tweeted this as well, the MAPS support system is is great. Um, you know, they never fail to have a bunch of people supporting any team. They have Summer League, G League, preseason game, regular season game. There's always a bunch of guys supporting them, so it was nice to see. Something I want to jump on is, <clears throat> excuse me, is how Dallas Mavericks, a lot of people are saying that they're going to be a sixth seed five seed four seed I think we're looking at a one to three seed I think that the Mavericks have finally Jason Kidd has implemented a system to where they're going to be one of the most dominant teams in the NBA regardless of being in a western conference regardless of playing eastern conference teams I think this team has finally been able to do what they want to do and that's that's something very important for them um Having Luka Doncic as the key facilitator is big for the Mavericks. And you got guys like Din Witty, who's going to be a starter, like I said recently. So I, I was sort of surprised that Kid already said that Din Witty and McGee were going to be starting. I've 
never heard that from a coach. I really have never heard a coach say, these guys are starting. You know, I think it's pretty obvious Christian Wood is going to start. I think it's obvious Doe is going to start. And Luca is one of the best players in the NBA. So you got your starting lineup there. And it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, we have a deep bench, and that's what Nico was searching for. You got Maxi, you got Hardy, you got Reggie, you got Tim, you got Dwight. I don't care what people say. Dwight is a good player. You know, he struggled in the postseason, but he's a solid player, and he's going to he's gonna do what Dwight does, and that's catch lobs and play solid defense and set good screens for Luka. So you got Dwight. You got Frank, who I think Frank's going to start off as the backup point guard at the regular season instead of Hardy, but I think Hardy will slowly develop into backup point guard. And you got Green, someone who I think Mavs fans have been worried about lately, but, you know, it's all it's all going to be something interesting to see, and I look forward to it, man. Um, you know, there's not much else to say about this Mavericks team right now. It's been quiet the last few last few weeks ever since the McGee signing. You know, one thing that I know Mavs fans are looking forward to is waiting to see whether or not some crazy way Jalen Brunson sign uh we get a sign and trade deal because that is the only sign uh free agency signing or not signing free agent that hasn't officially signed with their team. Nothing's official yet, nothing's set in stone. Maybe there's a third team coming in for a sign and trade deal. We have no idea. There there has not been too many rumors about it, but the one thing that everyone should know is nothing's official and set in stone yet. So it'll be interesting to see. As I said, the Mavs tip off their second summer league game tomorrow against the Utah Jazz. That's at 10 p.m. Eastern in Las Vegas. So that'll be fun to see. And yeah, guys, hoping to get a, a Mavs underscore FFL on here and all things Dallas on here in the next pod but you know just a short one this week just wanted to really recap everything that's been going on in the Mavs community and we'll see you guys for episode five thank you so much for tuning in be sure to hit that like and subscribe button